Life is full of unexpected wonders, beauty, blessings, and awesomeness. But life can also be sometimes filled with challenges, trials, tribulations, obstacles, difficulties, pain, and stuff that we don't know how we're going to get through. And as much as we can try to shift into a positive mindset, like a lot of people talk about, and it is healthy to have a positive mindset, but sometimes the positive mindset doesn't seem to be breaking through or helping us break through to the other side. And that challenge is still looking at us in the face, maybe even still hitting us in the face. So what is it that we can do to continue to move forward or even have some kind of jet fuel to get on the other side of it? Well, I've got some insights, some perspectives, and some of my own personal experience to share with you today, my friend, to inspire you and in how you can use challenges as rocket fuel to push you forward in life. Come on with me, my friend. Let's dig into the soil of this together. Welcome to you. My name is D. Grant Smith. I am the growth farmer for personal development through the lens of spirituality and storytelling. Here on this channel, it's all about growing into the best versions of ourselves. And this growth that we do, this transformation that we are in the process of now is exactly that. It's a process. It's not just getting to some sort of destination where everything will be magically worked out for us and we never have to do anything ever again. I do believe that God brings us unexpected blessings and oftentimes does so outside of our realm of trying to figure out how to make it happen on our own. So this isn't to say that things don't just magically work out in our favor, but it is to say that once we get to whatever destination or dream or goal that we're trying to get to, that's not the end of the story. There's still more to go. So with that, when we're going through difficulties and we're going through trials and tribulations and obstacles, especially if these challenges that we're facing have been things that we've been facing for a very long time, and it just doesn't seem to have some sort of outlet to shift, or it seems like maybe even hope might be lost. And it's like, why even go on anymore? I'm tired of facing these same challenges over and over again. What I want to share with you today is some inspiration some motivation, and really some empowerment for you in the way that you look at your story and seeing that because you're going through challenges, that by itself is inspiration, my friend. So here's what we're going to get into today. What if it's possible to experience not only personal growth, but true, lasting, dynamic, powerful transformation? Because of challenges and difficulties. Which leads to this question. Is it possible to experience growth and transformation without facing challenges, trials, and difficulties? I think it might be, but oftentimes those positive changes are not really something that lasts very long. Few people will seek out difficulties and challenges when they want to transform their lives and grow into the best versions of themselves. Are you one of those people? I'll be honest with you. I usually don't actively seek out challenges and difficulties for personal growth because, well, for a long time, challenges scared me. It was part of the negative story that I was telling myself about not being good enough, not having what it takes, and being a failure. And I spent over three decades in that space. What I found, though, is that through the intensity of difficulty and challenges, what actually happens is the most amazing transformational results do come out of these experiences. Let me give you a couple of illustrations of this. It turns out that challenges are actually this necessary ingredient for true and lasting change. It's because in these fires that we go through, it forges us into the best version of ourselves. It forges us into something different. It burns away so much of the negativity, illuminating for us some of the negative stories that we've been telling ourselves our whole lives that have actually been the cause of what's held us back. Let me give you a metaphoric example. When gold is mined out of the deep, 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 deep in the earth, and it's brought up to the surface, 
that gold, you couldn't go to a gold market and trade for anything, at least not much. Why? Because what comes up with the gold is a bunch of dross and a bunch of ores and a bunch of other things that are attached to this gold that keep it from being its pure self. So what makes gold so valuable is it goes through this very deep and very intense refining process. And after it has been refined and all that stuff that had been attached to it gets burned off, then it has its real value. And this burning process is a very intense burning fire. The same thing is true in our personal development. Whether we look at this from a place of looking at people in history, in fiction, or in film, or we look at it in actual written and recorded history, we see the same dynamics play out over and over and over again. What do these characters have in common? Well, I'll name off a handful right now and then tell you exactly how we can see the power of this dynamic in all of these different characters, both fiction and nonfiction. Aladdin, King David, Oprah Winfrey, Muhammad Ali, Paulo Coelho, Rocky Balboa, and J.K. Rowling. Now, I've mentioned these people in particular because they were examples that I used in my book, Be Solid, How to Go Through Hell and Come Out Whole, which in a lot of ways is a book that covers a big part of what I'm talking about with you here. I'll put a link down in the description below for you to grab that book for yourself. But in all of these instances, these fictional and non-fictional people, each one of these individuals spent some serious time in a figurative refining fire. And some of them spent some literal time in a refining fire. Because here's the thing, it is the fire where icons are made. Conventional wisdom tells us to find someone who has done what we want to do and follow their example. But what if there hasn't been anybody that you know of who has faced what you are facing right now? We think that success is the result of greatness coming about or greatness happening to us. A stroke of luck. Hard work finally coming through and paying off, overcoming the odds, and then winning. But the truth is, it's in the places where we are tested the most that actually forge us into the people who experience the greatness that is had. Now let's look at the historic and biblical character of David for just a moment. We naturally think of David's battle against Goliath. Now I've talked about David in a previous video that talks about how David was a man after God's own heart, not God's own mind. But that heart got tested over and over and over again to take him to a place to where he could become king. I'll put a link to that video down below as well and also pop it up here for you to check out after you watch this one, of course. Again, when we think of David, we think of David and Goliath. But the battle of, between David and Goliath didn't happen later in David's life. It happened early in his life because it was a stepping stone to take him to where he was going. The man who would become king was birthed in the desert while on the run from the man who had been like a father to him, somebody that he had served over and over and over again, somebody whose son was his best friend and like a brother. I'm talking about King Saul. And Saul had so much jealousy over David for numerous reasons that he tried to kill him over and over and over again. So David fled to a proverbial fire-like experience, on the run, in the desert, all alone, running from somebody that he had loved and trusted and honored and respected for a very, very long time. His proverbial fire was the desert. It was in this lonely place that he was prepared for what would end up being his reign as king. He learned how to trust himself in the desert, in the fire. He learned how to trust God. And as he waited in the desert, he was joined over a period of time by 400 other people who would become his mighty army. And the experience of serving these 400 people taught him how to be a leader. 
He learned how to listen to wisdom instead of just relying on the opinions of others. He learned what sacrifice really looks like. So here's some encouragement for you. We can follow the example of David, not just the faith of fighting a giant and using a rock to do so, but the faith of going through a refining fire process and recognizing that it's in this process of perpetual challenge where preparation is taking place. Be like David and overcome the refining fire so that you can become the king or queen that you are destined to be. Now, let's look at a more recent icon, Oprah Winfrey. You might or might not know her backstory, but to me, she's got one of the most inspiring stories in modern history. Oprah spent years in a proverbial desert before becoming one of the richest and most successful names in all of history. We typically think of Oprah as this Hallmark person, not the Hallmark Network, but you know what I'm saying. This Hallmark person with her own TV show, her own network, and now her own platform, where if you get invited on Oprah and you have a conversation with Oprah, you are set for life. But the icon that is Oprah wasn't always an icon. She actually struggled for a long time as a TV anchor woman when she was just getting started in media as a co-anchor in Baltimore. What fueled her was her belief that she could overcome that challenge and every other challenge. This faith that she had in herself that came after surviving a very hellacious childhood. Oprah as a child was victimized through sexual abuse by her cousins. She grew up in poverty. She lived in different family members' homes until her father took her in. But that's just part of the horrendous experiences that she endured. Oprah made herself strong by refusing to see herself as a victim. So often we can look at stories like Oprah's and say that she was victimized and put her in this box of victim or victimhood. And then in doing so, it shackles the person, especially if they place themselves inside that victimhood mentality, shackles them to being a victim for the rest of their lives. Oprah didn't do that. She never saw herself as a victim. She never backed down from challenges. There's this wonderful article that I will link below as well from Business Insider. She talks in that article about he, how she transitioned the program called AM Chicago from the lowest rated TV program in Chicago into the highest rated TV program in Chicago. And that program is what would eventually become the Oprah Winfrey Show, and the rest is history. So here's another piece of inspiration and motivation for you. No matter how difficult your challenges are right now, no matter what difficulties you are facing or what trials continue to show up in your life, be like Oprah. Don't allow yourself to see what you're going through or see the difficulties and the pain that you've experienced. Don't put yourself in the victim mode. You're not a victim. You are a king or queen who is being prepared to take a throne that's bigger and better than you've ever known. And if you will continue to believe in yourself, even when it seems like all hope is lost, your faith in yourself, your faith in God, will take you to places you've never been before. So here's the thing. Challenges are not given to us to cause us pain. Challenges serve a purpose to produce our best life. Oftentimes, we can be conditioned and trained by all kinds of different people in our childhood. Unbeknownst to them, it could be our teachers, it could be our parents, it could be institutions, to see trials and tribulations and challenges as something that we need to try to go around or avoid. And so many people try to do all kinds of things to go around the opportunity that might cause challenges or difficulties or pain. Yet comfort and growth are actually very opposite of each other. It's difficulty and trials and challenges that actually are the fuel that make us into the best version of ourselves. Here's a quote from my book that I mentioned earlier. 
it's from B solid how to go through hell and come out whole. This is a lesson I learned in 2017 when I was going through my own bit of hell and healing my heart and my mind from the end of marriage, being left and going through divorce. Here's what I learned. Pain can be one of our best teachers because it has our undivided attention. When we choose to allow our hardest challenges to be like a personal trainer, everything will change. This perspective shift is very essential. You're able to see more fully where the mindset can cause our problems and where these negative beliefs, these negative stories about who we are, about who other people are, about how God sees us and about how the world works, about how life treats us, these negative stories become our consciousness. And it's from this negative consciousness that we end up living out these perpetuating difficulties and struggles and trials over and over and over again until we choose to see ourselves in a different way. And changing that perspective, changing that story is elemental in changing our lives. And then from that, we're able to make the shift and experience real growth and transformation. Now, I just mentioned something that was a big part of my personal transformation story, and I'll dig a little bit deeper into that for you here to show you that if you're going through trials and tribulations, I know exactly what that difficulty and pain is like. I'm not immune to this stuff, and I'm not speaking from some soapbox without having had any experience of my own. For me, where the fire and I intersected changed everything. My lifelong greatest fear was rejection and abandonment, not just by anybody, but by the one person that I had given my heart to. 18 years ago, I thought that getting married would be my salvation from rejection and abandonment. I thought that all I had to do was just get somebody else to say I do, and then because of the I do, I'd be safe. No fear, no worries of being left, no fears or worries of rejection or abandonment. That was what I thought was going to happen, but I was wrong. Yet, at the same time, it was in the hell of my worst heartbreak back in 2017 that I found what was really missing what the real cause of my pain was. It wasn't the rejection and it wasn't the abandonment. The real cause was I didn't know how to love myself. Would I have ever really learned what self-love was and would I have ever really given it to myself? Would I have ever really stepped into my personal power and my own personal wholeness if I had not been brought through the fire of heartbreak? I don't know. But instead of letting that experience break me, or turn me into a victim. I used inspiration from people like Oprah, people like the biblical David, people like the other folks that I mentioned at the very beginning of this video to be rocket fuel for me, to fully transform me into the person that I would become, to the person that I am now, and to the person that I am becoming. Your worst pain can be a vehicle that takes you into your best life if you, if you will allow it to be. And when you fully commit to yourself to overcome the pain so that you can live your best life, you'll see that everything will transform for you. I've said at this video at the beginning of the title, five ways to use challenges to be rocket fuel for you in your best life. I'm going to give those to you right now. Number one, extreme tests and challenges are what create icons. Mediocre people stay mediocre because they run away from challenges and difficulties. But you, my friend, are not a mediocre person. You're not average. You are awesome. And you are worth believing in. So allow these challenges, these tests, these difficulties to be what refines you into the best version of you. Number two, the perceived loneliness that happens when we go into the desert, where we really find ourselves, where we really find God. This is a place where we get to really learn what it means to trust, to trust in ourselves, to trust in God, and to grow our faith. Don't run away from the desert. Don't avoid it. And don't try to get out of it as fast as you can because God puts you in the desert for a reason. All of it is for your own preparation for your highest good. Number three, comfort and growth, they're mutually exclusive. They're very opposite of each other. 
So if you want to be comfortable, you don't want to transform. If you want to be comfortable, you want things to stay the same or possibly get worse and never get better. If you want to grow, embrace the challenge. Embrace the difficulty. Allow it to teach you things that nothing else ever could. Number four, your hardest challenges are exactly the thing that reshape your mindset and your beliefs because they show you what your old concept of self was. It's the old concept of self, the negative beliefs, the limiting and scarcity concepts and ideas of being less than, of not being good enough. That's the things that have held you back your whole life. And all of those things come to the surface when you're finally alone, when you're finally in the desert, and you're finally really facing the challenges that have always been in front of you. And instead of running away from them, you're looking them dead in the eye and saying, I'm not moving, you are. And you're becoming the person who fully has the confidence and trust in yourself to overcome all challenges. But that comes through a process of seeing what those old stories are, erasing them or letting them go, and rewriting the story that you want to live out. And number five, staying on the path, despite the challenges, is how you become unstoppable. What does it take for you to become the best version of you? It's to embrace these challenges and let them be your teachers. To let them show you what it is that you are made of, to burn off and refine away anything that has been help holding you back so that you can truly step into your power. If you want help in this process, I have a powerful course called Confidence Like a Lion. It's actually, truthfully, two courses put together into one, and I'll put a link for it down below. But what I've shown you here today in this video, in using these inspirations to truly step into your power and to go through the refining fire, I give more training tools, insights, and I work with you in this process so that you can not only overcome the challenges that you face, so that you can fully step into your power, awaken the lion that lives within you, and operate as the best version of yourself each and every day. Because here's the thing, the best triumphs, the best victories, they come with the fire. When you see your brokenness, your difficulties, your pains, for what they truly are, everything shifts. Because what they truly are is a need for you to see yourself more holy. A need for you to grow your faith in you. And you can define faith however you want. Faith in yourself, belief in your higher power, faith in God, faith in what you are capable of, but trust in all of the above. Don't run away from challenges that lay in front of you, no matter how impossible they may seem. Because here's the thing, my friend, you were made to not only face giants, you were made to kick their ass. It's part of the human story. And I believe it's a part of your story. If you want help rewriting your story, that's something that I do with my private coaching clients. And it's also something I do with people who decide that they want to work with me and choose the opportunity to rewrite your story and rewrite your concept of self. I'll put a link down below to see how you can do that with me. And I'll also include my email address if you have questions about that. I have faith in you, my friend. I believe in you. I love you. And I encourage you to see, no matter what it is that you're going through, to see yourself as the great person that you are, the overcomer, the lion, the giant killer, the person who's capable of anything and everything. I love you, and I'll see you again soon.